2015, uh, a um, man named Vitalik Buterin had been looking and working with Bitcoin and essentially said, well, I can use this same construct, this network of computers that comes to agreement, but instead of agreeing on just the state of a ledger and the movement of this asset Bitcoin between accounts, why don't I make a uh, network architecture that comes to agreement on uh, different programs that it can run? So he sort of turned it into a generalizable um, computation tool. Starting to see, you know, the, the early days of Ethereum applications have been heavily around decentralized finance. But we're now starting to see the emergence of these other sectors, right? Mm -hmm. Entertainment, gaming, uh, and and sort of media broadly as sort mm -hmm. of overall digital lifestyle being a massive uh, sector, both existing today, but when you combine it with the possibility of uh, tokenization and uh, programmable software uh, that runs, you know, on a on a a global computer, you're actually sort of exploding the, the potential in this space. Your future wallet could have everything from, you know, uh, a digital collectible mm -hmm. to a fractionalized, um, you know, portion of ownership of a, of a Picasso or some piece of art uh, that has been tokenized to, uh, you know, your regular sort of tradable assets. It's a as well as you know anything you can come up with that exists today, essentially. So we're looking for you know outsized returns, the ability to have you know a really strong competitive advantage over their their peers or the other projects that are in their particular category, and uh, and I have to say it's an it's an extremely exciting space. Um, so if you can look at, start to imagine these companies more in that technology stack, it's honestly the very first um, step to understanding when and how different, uh, different projects will be successful.